Are you ready for rapid fire? Let's do it. All right. So we're going to start off with a comment from Mr. Steve Angeli. He was asked yesterday about his consideration of the transfer portal. And here's what Steve Angeli said about that. Right now, my entire focus is on Notre Dame. Um, I'm a guy that lives in the present. You know, the future can be determined when we get there. It's mm-hmm. not my worry right now. All I'm focused on is these next, you know, five, six practices that we have left in spring and to give them all. So what do you think, Jess? I think, you know, by the sounds of it, I don't think Steve Angeli's going to go anywhere. I just – I think he's a Notre Dame lifer ultimately, and I don't – I don't – I don't know. I just – it's hard to say because as much as you, you know, love a program like Notre Dame, he's still going to get his degree early and have the opportunity to be a starter elsewhere. And it, for for people who, you know, truly love the game, like I'm assuming Steve Angeli does, like he, he's going to want his opportunity. He's going to be, you know, basically like a Drew Pine. Drew Pine got his opportunity because someone else got hurt. Had, had Buckner got hurt, I don't think. Drew Pine ever would have gotten that opportunity. He would have, you know, and then he would have just transferred out. But I think, you know, comparatively when looking at Drew Pine to Steve Angeli, the thing that works in, in Angeli's, well, I guess maybe not in Jelly's favor, but maybe us as fans and jelly, you know, barring any injuries, isn't going to get any starting time. So Drew Pine saw what he could do as a starting quarterback. Right. And so he said, he saw the results and knew that he could probably go play somewhere else. I don't think Steve Angeli is going to get that opportunity, you know, that that validation of, you know, I could be a starter someone else. So I, I think Steve Angeli is going to be going to be here for until he graduates. Honestly, I, I don't really see well, him being anywhere else. But that great. See, that graduation is a year from now, assuming he's on track to get his degree. But like they put him on that three year track. That's why they go to summer school and that's why they get him in here early and do all those different things. So a year from now. He should have his degree in hand. Not a year from exactly right now, obviously, but a year and a month, but what, 13 months from now when May rolls around? So there, there's no reason, I don't think, for Steve Angeli to head out this year because stick it out, get your degree in another year. And I mean, I'm just being honest. I think Steve Angeli is going to make at least a couple starts this season because of everything that we've talked about as much as, you know, no, nobody wants to see Riley Leonard have to miss any time, but with this, you know, with, with the injury stuff, I've just, I've just got to think that Steve Angeli is going to get a couple of opportunities at some point this season to come in and play. And that, that gives him a chance to show what he can do once again. So I think, I don't think it's this year, this spring, I think it's a year from now, where after Riley Leonard is gone and then he's battling next spring with Minchie and CJ Carr for a starting job. I think that that's kind of the push point for Steve Angeli, not necessarily what's going on right now. I think we're on the same page with that, right? Yes. Okay. So Irish nose guard, Howard Cross, of course, was the guy who was responsible for the injury to Riley Leonard made that tackle at the end of the Notre Dame Duke game last September. So Leonard this winter, when he first got here, he said cross was going to take him to Roos Chris to make up for it. So we got to talk to Riley Leonard yesterday. Has that trip to Ruth Chris happened yet? Oh, I Come still on. haven't gotten to Ruth Chris dinner. <laughs> I don't know. I got to talk to him about that again. Um, like I said, he's still, he'll walk, he'll, he'll walk by me in the locker room. Hey, Riley, I'm really sorry, by the way. <laughs> Every day, like, sorry, Riley, I feel so bad. Like, you're good, man. He didn't do it on purpose. He's a great guy. So me and Howard kind of have that bond, I guess. So he's good natured about it, obviously, but fill in the blank. Howard Cross should do blank for not paying up yet. Howard blank, or sorry, Howard Cross should have to double up for not paying yet. I think at this point. He owes Riley Leonard two steak dinners, right? Like basically interest on the first one that he owes him. And, you know, a, kind of a side comment here. Isn't Riley Leonard just so goofy? Like he just sounds like a – just like a happy-go-lucky kid most of the time. You know what I mean? Like he just – when I listen to Riley Leonard, I just can't help to think that he's just a little bit of a goofball. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, he does seem pretty good natured, you know, and you know he's and he's taking it very well. He obviously holds no grudges against Howard Cross. They were just playing football, and you know, like I, I you know, Joe Joe Allen says steak dinner and a movie. I mean, I think at the very least he owes him two dinners and not a soup. You know, like he needs to take him, he needs to take him to the Roos Chris to pay up, and then he needs to take him. Whatever Riley Leonard wants, Riley Leonard should get from Howard Cross. Yes. At this point, you got to pay up. You can't just say sorry in the locker room. You got to pay up, man. <laughs> Put your money where your mouth is. That's right. Okay. So I was on the L Lucky Lefty podcast yesterday with uh, Malik Zaire and Sean Davis. They asked me which of these two things will happen first a national championship for Notre Dame football or a national championship for Notre Dame women's basketball? What is your answer? Um. Well, first and foremost, I listened to that podcast yesterday, and I thought you sounded great, by the way. I took the dog oh, for a you. walk, listened to your <laughs> segment. I mean, I, I couldn't – well, I could believe, but, man, they were really hyping you up on your – I know. Intro into the show yesterday. I thought that John was Davis. Great. Like I know. I need to pay that guy something. Talking about you, you were you are one of the best voices in in college women's basketball. I thought that was very nice of him, but I did too. I thought I think a national championship for the women's team is more on the horizon than the college football team. I just I thought the women's team, while performed really well this season, you know, but, but with a bunch of uh, injuries, I still felt like they were an elite eight team, and you know, being an elite eight team getting one of the top centers in the country, and that was Notre Dame's biggest kryptonite or hole in the roster this season, um, getting back Olivia Miles and pairing her with Sonia, Sonia Citron, you know, Maddie Westbelt, um, Hannah Hidalgo. Like, it, it's just I, – I talk about uh, an explosive roster. I, I definitely see the women having a, a more clear path to a championship than the, than the football team. I do too. I think they're just closer – right now they're yeah. already you know as you said they you know they were a couple play really two of the last three years they're a couple plays away from being elite eight teams in both of those years last year against Maryland in the sweet 16 not as much that wasn't quite as competitive but um you know they're they're on the verge and then you get back with you know what they're going to have coming back next year as I've said I completely expect them to be a final four team I just think they're closer now the way the roster is trending, though, for Notre Dame football, I think they're going to be in that conversation here within the next couple of years. But I'd still put women's basketball ahead of them in terms of who wins the next national championship. Uh, speaking of Notre Dame women's basketball, Salty, what's the status of the women's basketball players who could choose to enter the WNBA draft. The deadline to enter the draft was April 1st. So that is long gone now at this point. What is this? That was nine days ago. Maddie Westbelt did not enter her name in the draft in, you know, for the WNBA draft. And that was it, really. Yeah. That's that's pretty much it. So we still haven't got an announcement. From Maddie Westbelt, but I think she's going to be back here next year. Tommy, there is nothing more than I would be love to to be than than proven wrong that the football team and and they win a national championship this year. Trust me, yeah, the I women mean, have won two in my lifetime. I've never right. seen like a college football. I'm just answering the question of which I think is more likely. Yeah, like. You know, Joe Joe's saying the same thing. I hope the team proves you both wrong next year. Well, we all do, <laughs> right? But it's already been 36 years. Like, is there any more to any, any more right any more evidence right now that says they're going to win a national championship within the next year than there was two years ago or three years ago? Or do I believe they're ago? on the right trajectory compared to yeah. you know past? Yeah, I do. But they're moving in the right direction. I just don't think that they're quite there just yet. They could be with the defense that they've got. Like maybe they, maybe they end up being one of those teams this year. I think we'd all love to see it, but got to get to the playoff first. Got to win some games. It's going to be fun. 
So the NFL announced today that the Packers are going to play the Eagles Friday, September 6th in Brazil in week one of the NFL season. You like that? You like that matchup to kick things off to start the year? <laughs> Brazil? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Um, you know, I'll, I'll always back the NFL up for wanting to expand the game. You know what I mean? Get basically allow the game to reach kind of areas that it hasn't have a, you know, impact, global impact, spread the game essentially. But Brazil and the, I mean, they had to pick the Eagles and Packers for a reason, right? Like they probably had to pick the most two popular teams. In I mean, it's a nice TV matchup. Yeah. I mean, those are, you know, the, the Eagles were a playoffs team. The Packers were a playoff team. Both of those teams still have upward projections for this season. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't mind the matchup and I don't mind the fact that they're again, trying different areas internationally to expand the game to like, I like watching the games, whether they're in London whether they're in Brazil, whether they're in Mexico City. Like, I enjoy those things. I think it's it's fun when they do it. Sean Kelly wants to know if we're bigger Notre Dame or Cowboys fans. Who's going first, me or you? You go first. I, I, have, I have very good rationale for this. I'm a bigger yeah. Cowboys fan, but I'm a bigger Cowboys fan – because I have more leniency for college players. I don't have leniency for, for for professional football players getting lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of money. And it's not the same as the NIL, so no one put in the comments, you know, the, the stuff with the NIL. It's based off your name, image, and likeness, not your performance. These guys get mega contracts, and so when you got wide receivers who drop passes or, you know, I just don't have – I don't have the patience for mental mistakes in the in the professional game. So I'm I am a bigger Cowboys fan. Let me ask you this. How many players do, from the Cowboys do you think you could name from when you were like 12 11 12 13 years old? How many how many players from that from that I mean team? I could probably get at least 50. You think you could get that many? Yeah. Okay. I think I could I don't know if I could get 50, but I think that I could get at least 20 from like for my 12, 13, 14 year old range. <laughs> and that's a lot that's a lot farther away than yours. Correct. Right? Yes. Staubach, Danny White. <laughs> you want to count? Drew no, Pearson. I don't Tony think Hill, anyone else wants us to Butch count Johnson, either. Golden Richards, Randy White, Too Tall Jones, Harvey Martin. I think you undersold yourself. I think you could get way more than you expected. Neely, Rafty, Donovan, backup tight end, Jay Saldy, Billy Joe Dupree, Cliff Harris, Charlie Waters, Everson Walls, Drew Pearson. I think I already said Drew Pearson. Preston Pearson, Robert Newhouse. So are you going to answer the question? I don't think I've heard your answer yet. You just had to push me, didn't you? <laughs> I'm sitting here hosting a Notre Dame show, and you just had to push me. <laughs> I'll just say it's easier to be a fan covering covering a college football team like Notre Dame, year in, year out, game in, game out. It's easier to be a fan of a team that I don't have to cover all the time. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> because Again, I try I, to keep as much emotion out of, you know, when we sit here, you know, we break down games, we evaluate players, we do all this stuff, try to keep as much emotion out of it as possible, separate all that so that I can be as pragmatic as possible when trying to, you know, do this. But, I, you know, I will say I, I came here and, you know, Ultimately, because of the fandom that I had growing up as a Notre Dame fan. That's what brought me here. But it's easier to to be able to sort of compartmentalize and be a fan of a professional team that that I don't, you know, that I'm not in on day in. It's not your job. Out, the way, yeah, the way I am here at Notre Dame, if that makes sense. So just to, like, I don't love them any less. They're, they're like children to me. I'm just more a fan of the Cowboys because I expect more out of them. I have 
higher expectations because they are professionals, not amateurs. Right. And that too. Yeah. That's a good point too. I can I can live with a college player making a mistake because they're still a kid learning the game. But when you're in the NFL, you were selected to be the best of the best and getting paid a lot of money. So again, I have more expectations. Good answer. Good answer, Jess. So Mike Bert Greenberg has compared Caitlin Clark to Tiger Woods for the impact that she had on the interest of the sport of women's basketball. Do you buy or sell that comparison? I 100% buy that comparison because there are people who will literally tell you, I don't watch golf unless Tiger Woods is playing, or I haven't watched golf until Tiger Woods played, or I'm watching this tournament this weekend because Tiger Woods is returning. You know what I mean? And I feel like it's the same thing for women's basketball. Like, you, you mentioned, you know, Caitlin Clark is playing. I'm going to tune into that game. Like we talked about this in terms of the national championship. The reason why it did so many, so much uh, or did better in numbers is because of Caitlin Clark, just a casual fan who turned in and said, I just want to see what the phenomenon is about. I want to see what all the hype is about. And I think it's the same with Tiger Woods and especially people maybe later generations who didn't get to see Tiger Woods in his prime. They've only heard about tiger woods right and so now you flip on tiger woods and you're like i want to see some of that magic that everyone alludes to right and so that's the same type of comparison i have for kit and clark people tuned in because they want to say is it really what it is is she going to drop 30 points and you know make all these dazzling steph curry like threes like yeah i, I think it's a fair comparison I, yeah i think it's a great comparison actually and you know greenberg is typically mr hyperbole and you know way over the top and you know lives you know, solely, you know, in the in the moment. But I, I think it's one of the better comparisons, the analogies that he's ever made. Because, like, I know that a lot of guys, women who listen to and watch this show are, you know, like I'm in my 50s, so I grew up in the 70s and 80s. And growing up in that time, the sport of golf was basically an old white man's country club sport. You know, like it was not cool at all to play golf. And then along comes Tiger Woods and the sport gradually became younger. You know, like it, people wanted to, young people wanted to go out and play golf because of Tiger Woods. It became a lot more athletic. It became a lot more physical. And you look at, you know, all these young guys who are playing today and who have had success, you know, whether it's like, Spieth or, or, you know, Rory, whoever it, it happens to be, they grew up watching Tiger Woods. And so he has had a major influence. And I think that, you know, you, you can kind of like, you're going to see like these girls who are, who are in middle school and grade school right now. I mean, <laughs> like they're going to drive some coaches crazy, but they're going to be putting up logo three pointers or they're going to be trying to put up logo three pointers, but you're going to see, I think you're going to see a lot of you know, that copycatism that's going to be coming up here within the next few years. So I, I think it's a, uh, I think it's a great comparison just with the, for the overall impact and interest that Tiger Woods brought. I think that Caitlin Clark has done much of the same for women's basketball. And then Sean Kelly asked if we buy or sell Woods being the most polarizing athlete in the last 20 years, I would sell it because I it's, you know, I'm going to say this name and I'm going to regret it, but it's LeBron. LeBron is the most polarizing athlete. Of the last 20 years. I don't think I don't think Tiger Woods is even in the same ballpark as him. I'm trying to like let's 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 try to go sport by sport. Okay. Golf, Tiger Woods, basketball, okay. LeBron James. Yeah. Who's football? That's what is it already Patrick Mahomes? I don't think he's got enough hate so far. Is it Brady? It's okay. It's definitely Brady. That's a good okay. point. Um, baseball, Ken Griffey Jr., Barry Bonds. No. No, but, but like last 20 years, Albert Pujols. I mean, it could be Schilling now, but you know, that again, like that dips into you know, to waters that I don't yeah. want to get it. Yeah. But it's again, like Schilling was not even beloved in his own locker room when he was playing. Right. You know, he, not even beloved. He wasn't liked by a majority of his teammates when he was playing. 
but he wasn't, it didn't seem like when he was playing, he was as polarizing when he took the mound. Roger Clemens, I'm just, you know, because this is the last 20 years, so there are a lot of names that you could throw. I would say, I would say Barry Bonds. I think Barry Bonds more than anyone. Okay. And then what about, I'd say Barry Bonds or Alex Rodriguez, I think would be my final two. Um, who's your college football most polarizing? Tim Tebow, Reggie Ooh. Bush, Vince Young. I would Young. say Bush. Reggie Re Bush. Reggie Bush. But does that even – does he – he barely gets in there in the 20 years. Just because – what? Or him or Manziel maybe? Johnny Manziel? Johnny Manziel is up there. Josh brings up Derek Jeter. I think Derek that's a Jeter's fair a really argument. One because he was a Yankee, and I think the that's, that's a really good one. Because, like, the Yankee thing and the fact that – would he – he definitely would not have gotten, you know, near the love that he got had he not played for the Yankees and won all those championships. If he just accumulated the numbers on another team, he would have been a really good player. But because he was a Yankee, that changed a lot of things. I think Jeter's a good one too. Tebow. Take... Tebow was huge. That's that's a good one, Jason. Tim Tebow. Lawrence Phillips, was he 20 years? I think he might have been a little bit more than, than 20 years, Johnny. Hot that's take, right. Derek Jeter. I think Tebow's, I think Tebow's the answer for college football. I think that's Overrated. that's gotta be it. Who's that? Derek Jeter. <laughs> Give me a rod over Derek Jeter any day of the week. Wow. Okay, but now that as we a player. As a player, as a Are player, you factoring only. The nothing steroids else. in there too. Statistics only. Oh come on! Everyone did steroids in in the in that in that window. <laughs> Everyone did steroids. You know that. Um, okay, but now that we've done each sport, are you still sticking with LeBron? Yeah. I don't think there's another player that has lived up to and simultaneously crushed the hype at the same time. And that's where I'll leave that one at. He's he's shattering every every basketball record ever, and he was he was hyped up to do that. Not every player does that, so that would be my uh, my final answer as well. Yeah, and no matter how much you hate him, dislike it, whatever it might be, it's it's the answer. There's no other athlete who crosses political lines right now who's as polarizing politically as LeBron James. And that's why the answer has to be LeBron yeah. James. And that's because why you once politics love him or become, hate him. yeah, once politics become part of the formula, then you're, you know, it's just, it's automatic. You're one side or the other. So that's why it's Ooh, LeBron James. Salty come out of left field with this one. I like this. Yeah, the home run race between Sosa and McGuire brought a lot of fans back to baseball. Oh, so you're like, is this going back to what we were talking about, like the comparison to uh, Caitlin Clark? Is that what Salty yeah. is talking about? That's a good one too. That's it. But I still think I th I still think Tiger Woods for the cultural impact he had on the sport of golf. And golf is still a young person's sport right now. And it was Tiger Woods made golf cool years ago. Yeah. Absolutely. And I don't think that you can say that baseball is cool right now. And I think the other yeah, very much. And I think that the, the part that's cool about Tiger Woods and compare like that comparison we were just doing Clay, Caitlin Clark, I think you're going to see a similar trend. Like Caitlin Clark is going to influence a generation of players. You know right. what I mean? And that's what Tiger Woods did. He introduced golf to people who probably would have never played golf had they not seen Tiger Woods. Right. And that's why it also is important that, that she continues, you know, like, Diana Taurasi, you know, with her stuff, oh, you're going to play these old women now. And, you know, we're, you know, like, it's not going to be easy coming in. But, I mean, they're going to market the heck out of Caitlin Clark in the WNBA. And, like, that's got to – she's got a chance to really lift that whole sport as well. You know, like the WNBA as opposed to college basketball. She's got a chance to really popularize that. I think that I saw today – where where was it that something like 20 of 36 Indiana Fever games are going to be nationally televised this year and it's all because of Caitlin Clark so I'll be curious to see if uh, if the interest in the WNBA really spikes 
with the Clay, Caitlin Clark effect. As for like the, the women's game of college basketball, the tournament obviously set multiple viewership records this year. So do you think that it's going to survive, like the popularity will survive Caitlin Clark's departure to the WNBA? Will it stay as popular as it's been this season? I'm just going to have to say no, because I don't think we've seen a clear handing of the baton like we've talked about. You know what I mean? Like, I don't I, I still think we need to know who that player is going to be going for. Like, who's the next Caitlin Clark? I think until we kind of know that, I can't definitively say. But I'm just right now like she's a once in a lifetime player. So I just I have to say no for now. I, I just think it I need to I'm a, I'm a person of you know, numbers, you know this, I need to see it consistently <laughs> before I can, you know what I mean? Make that it, it this is the first time right. ever. So what, what evidence here's, do I have to say that thing that this well, is going to continue to happen? Here's what's interesting. Obviously her games had the biggest spikes in numbers, the record viewership, but there were 57 overall women's March madness games on, you know, on all the ESPN platforms. They averaged 2.2 million viewers. That is a 121% increase from a year ago, which which makes it the most watched NCAA tournament ever. So it's not it wasn't just her games. There was also now obviously her games helped boost that average, but at the same time there was more overall interest. They they she helped draw in a lot of casual viewers. A lot of those casual viewers will stay around because they're like, huh, fundamentally, this is a better game than the college men's game, for example. You know, like, and there's like, they found out that there's more to like about, I think, the women's game than they thought there was going to be. So they're not all going to stick around, you know, on that level. But I do think that, you know, just a year ago, the record for a championship game was a little over 10 million. And I think that you're going to see that kind of become sort of the norm now, as opposed to the six plus million that it was before that. I think that you're going to see a lot more casual interest that comes around for the women's game when it comes to the NCAA tournament specifically. But as we were talking about earlier in the show, those young stars like Hidalgo and Watkins and others, it's really on them now to kind of take the baton and run with it and continue to draw in those casual fans with their play. I agree. All right. Decaf is off to watch the Cubs. I had a couple more questions I wanted to throw in here at the end. Tommy, what's one movie or TV character death that was the hardest for you to get over? Have you thought about this one at all? Um, I've got three. I'll, I'll oh, do mine. Wow. I'll do mine. Uh, number one, Goose. In Top Gun, when Goose died, that's at the top of my list. Like, that's how do you get like it's like the movie is so good until you get to that point, and then it's like, oh man, it's just like Goose died, and watching you know Tom Cruise go in the water to get him and all that, like that's like the ultimate. That that was that's the toughest one for me. Number two, Rob Stark, Game of Thrones, when he died in the Red Wedding episode. Thanks like, for ruining it for me. <laughs> well, here's a here's here's a non-spoiler spoiler. The episode was not actually called Red Wedding. It has just been dubbed the Red Wedding because of, you know, they he died at the Red Wedding. But like you were ever going to go back and actually watch it. That's number 2. Number 3, Henry Blake, Colonel Henry Blake when Henry died on MASH when his plane went down in the Sea of Japan. Those are my top 3. Um hmm. Um, I would have to go with Tony Stark in the Avengers movie. Okay. AKA Iron Man. Oh, thanks for that spoiler. I didn't know Tony Stark died. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then next would be my good friend Mufasa from Lion King. <laughs> All right. I guess that shows where we are generationally. <laughs> so. I just don't have the recall like you do. 
I and I I have not seen nearly as many movies as you. Well, I mean, I do have a couple years on you, so I guess that has something to do with that. I like that question. That was a good one, Tommy. Andre, uh, you know, we were talking about the cards earlier. He says he wants a WNBA rookie card for Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. Do you know if they're pumping those out just yet, Jesse? Like, are they? I have are not they on, seen are they any on those? Uh, <laughs> Angel Reese. Or Caitlin Clark. I've been too uh, infatuated with my Jackson Holiday card. I, I I've been actually battling the markets because I was like, you know, I don't want this guy to get too big because that's it's it's like I feel like it's kind of the stock market, right? He's gonna make his debut, and if he mm-hmm. plays really well, the price is just gonna continue to you know go up, up, up. So I'm trying to get it kind of I guess before he before he pops. So that you was my so. rationale. You hope so. Andre wants to know when we're getting more whiteboard stuff. Didn't we kind of say maybe after the blue gold game you could yeah. break out some whiteboard? We would we would give some analysis based off of some some personnel and groupings that we see from from Mike Denbrock offensively. What do you think about this one from DK? He says you're so young, you think the NBA plays <laughs> defense. I was in a little bit of a chat war with some people. I'm just going to leave it at this. The guy that we like the NBA today there are so many more people who can create baskets for themselves off the dribble. Like just the talent is so much greater than it was 20 years ago. And so while it looks like bad defense, it's just incredible offense. We've never seen guys like Kevin Durant, Michael Porter, Jr. um, Steph Curry, you know, uh, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard. Like I just, we've never seen basketball players like this. And then, you know, back in the day, you could clothesline players on defense and not even get a foul. Like it's, it's, you know, I, I understand they've taken some of the physicality out of it. And, you know, I don't like the ticky tack fouls at, you know, at times either, but I don't think it's to blame a, a bad defense. I just think that the, the scorers are that good these days. I think that it's more of that than I think it's kind of a cliche to say the NBA doesn't play defense they're not allowed to play defense the way they did back in the 80s and right into the 90s with all the physicality but because of the level of play it's just it's tough joe wants me to share the athletic um login show up tomorrow joe and maybe i'll give you guys a little surprise so want to want to keep it legal but it's Coming like you, we'll, these people expect the to these these the basketball games to be played like football in terms of physicality. Just because guys aren't you know tackling each other in the paint anymore, it's like not good basketball. Yes, I'm, they're they're literally you know, and I've I've come around you know, myself on the NBA. I'm not <laughs> you the, never I'm watched not, the NBA. Now I'm not the biggest NBA, NBA fan, but I will say they are some of the greatest athletes in the world. And that just by definition makes playing defense when you've got some of the greatest athletes in the world playing offense, it makes them very tough to guard, especially when you don't, when you're not allowed, you know, some of that physical contact. Right. Like, like you used Are to there say. rules in the NBA that I think should be tweaked a hundred percent, Yeah, but. I just, if they, I mean, if they let them play defense, like they did in the eighties, guys would be in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. Every night, you know, because again, these guys are still bigger and, and stronger now. Joe says he was made way more into the bird Jordan era. Me too. Like I pretty much stopped after Jordan retired having any real, you know, like deep interest in the NBA. Not that I was a huge Jordan fan, but like that's when the NBA was still really interesting to me. But NBA's got a pretty good, uh, pretty good audience themselves right now. I think basically the second best audience viewership wise to the NFL. The NFL rules everything. All right, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up with that as we teetered into basketball talk at the end. We'll have more Notre Dame football talk on tomorrow's show, though. So we will be here. I hope you will as well. And again, we'll be talking about some of Dane Brugler's NFL draft evaluations of the Notre Dame guys. Guess we'll be back back. again. (laughs) Whether you love me or hate me, you get four days in a row, baby. That's right, baby. That's right. Vince is just chilling over there in Penland. All right. So that's going to do it. Hit the (laughs) like button before you leave. Subscribe, rate, and review. Thanks for being here. Good good, uh, questions tonight. 
on the mailbag, and we will talk to you tomorrow on IB Nation Sports Talk.